The Tide Defender is possibly one of the strongest starfighters the Empire has ever created. Backed by the man himself, Grand Admiral Thrawn, this ship was pretty much a multi-role starfighter. We talked in a separate video about how the R-Wing and the Wolfen 2 in the Star Fox series was a multi-role starfighter. So as for the TIE Defender, it's pretty much on the same level. But with the new content update coming to Star Wars Squadrons that allows you to play as a B-Wing or a TIE Defender, it begs the question on how on earth the devs are going to be able to balance this ship to make it playable in the game. And in today's video, we're going to actually answer this question. We're going to look at the Star Wars Rebels TV series and see how they presented the ship, as well as look at previous video games and how they made the TIE Defender playable. But just quickly before we jump into that subject, my question of the day to you guys is, would you rather play the B-Wing or the TIE Defender? Let me know your answer and your reasons why in the comments down below. But without further delay, let's get right into the video. So, in canon and legends lore, the TIE Defender comes in with six heavy laser cannons, concussion missiles, proton torpedoes, and a tractor beam projector. And unlike its counterparts, it is also fully shielded. This ship can do everything a TIE fighter, bomber, and interceptor is built to specifically do. And in the TV series, Star Wars Rebels, in the scene where the Empire is chasing down Mon Mothma, you can see the TIE Defender just easily destroy three separate Y-Wings with no effort at all. Whilst they were able to escape from it by hitting the ship with an ion cannon, it just goes to show that its six heavy laser cannons really pack a punch. Okay, so while the show doesn't really give us many answers, let's look at previous video games. So the TIE Defender does appear in the 1994 PC game, TIE Fighter. But just going through gameplay alone, it is very obvious to see that the TIE Defender is insanely overpowered compared to its other TIE Starfighter counterparts. Whilst the TIE Defender does far exceed the capabilities of many other existing Starfighters, later iterations of the X-Wing game series on the PC either toned them down or made them completely unplayable. Okay, well let's take a look at the TIE Defender in X-Wing Alliance. Ek actually had some gameplay of this when he was trying to recreate Star Wars Squadron's fleet battle mode in Star Wars X-Wing Alliance. So if you do want to see that video, I'll put it in the top right info card which should be appearing right now or in the pinned comment right down below. So one thing that really stands out of interest here is that two of the six lasers are actually ion cannon lasers. The other four are your standard laser cannons. So all six together are really great at stripping down shields and destroying hull. And if we look at the stats of the TIE Defender in the X-Wing Alliance game, you can see it's still really beefy. It's got high speed, effective acceleration, and really strong maneuverability. Not to mention the shield rating and hull rating are pretty decent as well. So finally, let's have a look at one of the biggest mods for Star Wars Empire War right now. That is Thrawn's Revenge. Thrawn's Revenge does allow you to build the TIE Defender as well as most of the other TIE lineup. So going through the stats for each TIE Starfighter that we can build here, the TIE Defender is the most expensive to build, but has the best stats across all four starfighters. What's interesting though is that this version of the TIE Defender doesn't have dual laser cannons. Instead of the two dual standard laser cannons and the dual iron cannons, it only has two standard laser cannons and one iron cannon. And on top of that, its tractor beam is also removed. So there we have it. That's a good majority of how the TIE Defender is represented in both the Star Wars TV shows and the games it's been included in. So with all this information gathered, the question about how EA Motive is going to balance the TIE Defender into Star Wars Squadrons still hasn't been answered. What are they going to do to make this incredibly powerful ship playable and balanced in standard fleet battle gameplay. So what we do know about the TIE Defender in Star Wars Squadrons is that it's going to fall within the fighter class. So it is going to be standing side by side with a TIE Fighter. So what's the approach going to be here? So in my personal opinion, I do believe the TIE Defender will have more damage output than the TIE Fighter. The reasons I'm confident about this is that for one, the TIE Interceptor does have a higher damage output than the TIE Fighter and the fact that the ship is going to be shielded, which means it's not going to have any power shunting that the TIE Fighter has. 
so the TIE Fighter can shunt all of its power into lasers and double up its lasers to get a 25% damage boost. The TIE Defender isn't going to be able to do that, but I do believe its base standard damage output will be quite powerful. Regarding maneuverability, I do believe the ship is going to have more than the TIE Fighter, but obviously it will have less than the TIE Interceptor. Otherwise, what is the point of the TIE Interceptor? The big thing about it is the maneuverability and speed. So whilst avoiding making the TIE Interceptor redundant, I strongly believe the TIE Defender will nicely slot in between a fighter and interceptor status, meaning it will have more firepower, it will have more speed or maneuverability, but it will be fully shielded and have a very low hull, much lower than your TIE Fighter. This is the simplest answer I have for how they're going to manage the TIE Defender into Star Wars Squadrons. Strip away a lot of its hull, give it some shields, make it very maneuverable, make it have a lot of firepower, but not make it as fast as the TIE Interceptor, but have less hull than the TIE Fighter. But what about the complex approach we can take with the TIE Defender being in Star Wars Squadrons? I think the developers could justify putting a lot more power into the TIE Defender if they remove one of its auxiliaries. So what I mean by that is obviously you're going to have shields on this Empire ship, but you won't have your right auxiliary, meaning you can only carry one rather than two, which the TIE Interceptor and TIE Fighter can, and so on and so forth. That would make the TIE Defender very interesting to play and very different from the TIE Fighter and the TIE Interceptor. So whilst you could run Supply Droid and Iron Torpedo with a TIE Fighter, I'm theorizing you couldn't run both of those on a TIE Defender. You'd have to pick and choose between the two. This opens up a lot of balancing opportunities with the developers on how they want to manage the TIE Defender. Or better yet, they might actually restrict you from choosing what type of laser cannon you want on the TIE Defender. You're stuck with this unique dual iron cannon and standard laser cannon and build out. Whilst it doesn't sound fun to restrict what laser cannons you want on the TIE Defender, there has to be some form of compromise to allow this amount of strength into this Starfighter. So just to recap in case anyone's confused on where I'm coming at here, my simple answer is that it'll fit perfectly in between the TIE Fighter loadouts and the TIE Interceptor loadouts. So good speed and maneuverability, good amount of damage, but very weak hull and very low shields. My complex answer is that they'll restrict you on what components you can use on the TIE Defender. So say for example, you're only allowed one laser loadout and one auxiliary on the TIE Defender, then you could allow a little bit more hull, a little bit more speed and a little bit more power on the TIE Defender, really honing down the fact that this is a multi-purpose Starfighter. And looking back at the blog post that EA Motive dropped on us a couple of days ago, there really isn't a lot of information to go on on how they're going to manage the TIE Defender. So really, anything is on the table right now. I highly doubt we're going to get any more information on how the TIE Defender is going to work up until the day it's actually launched sometime in mid-December. So if you feel some of my suggestions are a little bit too wild or maybe incorrect, just know all we can do is make educated guesses here. Let me pass off the question over to you guys as well, because I'm quite interested to hear your thoughts on how they'll nerf the TIE Defender to be playable in Star Wars Squadrons. With all the information points we've grabbed from Star Wars Rebel, Rebel, TIE Fighter 1994, X-Wing Alliance and Thrawn's Revenge, my educated guess is that this ship is going to be very hard to master. I've said countlessly in previous videos, I strongly believe a lot of people enjoy playing the Empire purely because it has a lower skill ceiling and it's much easier to learn and get good at compared to most of the ships on the Rebel lineup. Not many people like the idea of having them manage their shields when they could literally just power shunt all their power to lasers in the Empire ships. The TIE Defender is not going to be able to do that. It's going to have shields. So power shunting is out of the question there. So this does make me believe that this ship is going to have a very high skill ceiling, much like the TIE Reaper also on the Empire faction. But that is where I'm going to wrap up the video. Let me know your thoughts on this video's topic as well as our question of the day, which is, will you be playing the B-Wing or TIE Defender in Star Wars Squadrons? Let me know everything in those comments, guys. I read all of them and try to get back to some of you as well. And for the four people that are still here, if you haven't checked out our video about the High Republic and why it needs a video game, definitely check it out in the top right corner right now in the info card or in the pinned comment down below. That video was the most requested by people on the YouTube community post and on the X2 Discord. Unfortunately though, the video isn't really performing well. So if you want to go and check that out and support us, that would really help. 
But other than that, I have been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.